In this video, you're going to learn the six questions that insurance adjusters are going to ask you after a car accident and how to answer them. If you were involved in a car accident and filed a claim, an insurance adjuster will probably be calling you very soon. Keep in mind, the other driver's insurance company is looking for reasons to deny your claim. As a personal injury lawyer, I receive recorded statements from insurance companies in almost every car accident case. Out of all of these statements, I have compiled a list of the six most common questions that I see in almost every single recorded statement that's given. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what those questions are and how to answer them. One quick disclaimer, this video is not legal advice. It is for educational purposes only. So with that being said, let's get into question number one. That question is, where were you coming from and where were you going? Here's an example I'm going to share with you of a recorded statement where an adjuster from the at-fault driver's insurance company interviewed a woman who was rear-ended while sitting at a red light. The adjuster says, where were you headed at that time? Answer, I was headed going home. Question, going home? And where were you coming from? Answer, I was coming from work. Why would the adjuster be asking this question, especially the adjuster for the at-fault driver? If the adjuster knows that their own insured caused the accident, they may be looking for a reason to shift blame onto you, even if it's not a fair reason at all. For example, they may be asking this in order to determine if you may have been affected by alcohol at the time of the accident, running late or something like that, or may have been suffering from exhaustion from a long road trip. If they ask you this question and you don't feel comfortable answering it, or you're afraid that it's going to cast you in some sort of unfair negative light, don't be afraid to simply tell the adjuster that that is personal and that you don't feel comfortable answering that question. Now let's move on to question number two. What happened? Tell me what happened in the accident. Answer it as truthfully and honestly and completely as you can remember. Insurance companies may, however, use a mistake that you make about a particular detail to call into question your memory of the entire event. Here is a real life example I'm going to give you to demonstrate this point. A man was driving his SUV. It was a Forester on the highway when suddenly a BMW came up from behind him and rear-ended him, causing a huge multi-car accident on the highway. The SUV was driving in the leftmost lane of traffic when he was hit. The BMW was driving in the lane directly to the SUV's right and then swerved into the SUV's lane and clipped him on the back passenger side of the SUV. Now, after the accident, the at-fault driver's insurance company took a recorded statement of another driver who was driving behind the accident when it happened and saw the whole thing unfold. The witness said that he saw the BMW swerve left into the SUV's lane, hitting the rear of the SUV. Let's take a look at the transcript of the recorded statement that was given over the phone to the adjuster after the accident. The adjuster asks the witness, now, in terms of the, the BMW in the left lane, was there any contact between those two vehicles? The witness says, I, I, I believe there was. Oh, and it was uh, to the rear side of the BMW. Okay, rear side. Answer, on, on the rear passenger side of the BMW. So here the witness made a minor mistake by describing the BMW as impacting the SUV from the rear passenger side of the BMW, when in fact it was the front driver side that ran into the back rear passenger side of the SUV. Fast forward three years later, and you'll see how the insurance company tried to use this minor mistake about the points of impact to deny the SUV's insurance claim. The SUV driver has had to file a lawsuit against the at-fault driver to try to recover under that insurance policy. The guy who witnessed the accident and gave the recorded statement to the adjuster is called back in after three years and asked to testify about what he saw that day when the accident happened. The insurance lawyer gives the witness a copy of the recorded statement that he had given to the insurance adjuster three years ago and then asks, all right, looking at your transcript, you're asked on page four, was there any contact between the two vehicles? And you said you believe there was. Do you see that on page four, line 132 through 135? The witness says, yes, ma'am. And then the next words out of your mouth were, quote, on the rear passenger side of the BMW. Do you see that? And he says, yes, correct. And then she says, oh, yes, you saw the impact on the rear passenger side of the BMW. 
and then says, even though he jolted to the left, that doesn't jive, does it? He says, well, that's been four years ago. And as you said, so whether left or right, he still caused the accident. And then he also says, I do feel a little badgered by you turning left or right when I don't remember four years ago. And then the insurance lawyer says, I'm not badgering you. I'm just asking you because your testimony is completely conflicting today. So there you can see the insurance company was trying to use the witnesses mistakes about little minor details to suggest that his testimony about who caused the wreck was unreliable. Therefore, when describing how your accident unfolded to the insurance company, it's best not to give specific details unless you are 100% certain about them. That being said, if the other driver in your accident caused the accident, explain in detail why they were at fault. Now, moving on to question number three, were you injured and what were your injuries? Insurance companies need to know this information. They need to know the nature and extent of your injuries and the cost of treatment in order to calculate how much to pay you on your personal injury claim. Never ever lie or exaggerate about those figures. Depending on how recent the wreck was, however, you may not know the true extent of your injuries. If you say something like, I'm fine, you might mean I'm still alive and breathing. But the adjuster may take that to mean that you're either not injured at all or that you only suffered minor injuries, even if that's not the case. If you tell the adjuster, well, my chest hurts because you have a bruise and scrape where the seatbelt locked across your chest at the moment of impact, but don't mention the soreness in your neck until much later on, the adjuster may assume that your neck is totally fine and say that something else caused it a year later when your cuts from the seatbelt are gone and healed, but that nagging soreness in your neck that started at the time of the wreck or shortly after it is still there and you're still having to spend money treating it. It's usually best not to describe your injuries to the insurance adjuster at all. Don't do it at all. Instead, say, please talk to my lawyer about that. If you don't have a lawyer yet, say, that's private personal information that I don't feel comfortable sharing at this time, but I'll ask my doctor's office to send you copies of my medical records and bills when I'm finished treating. That's all you have to say. So let's move on to question number four. Was anyone else injured? Insurance companies love to ask the drivers who caused the accident or other drivers who may not have caused the accident but are not filing personal injury claims arising from the accident this question because they use it to imply that any other drivers who are making personal injury claims are fakers or exaggerators. Here's an example of a recorded statement given by the driver who has just rear-ended another driver who filed a personal injury claim as a result of being rear-ended by this driver who's giving the statement. Question. Okay. And were there any injuries sustained? No. Okay, great. So that is totally self-serving. And the insurance company later denied the injured driver's claim and tried to use this recorded statement by the at-fault driver to show that the person she rear-ended was not actually injured because the driver who hurt her said she wasn't. This is a dirty tactic for a number of reasons. First, the drivers that they are asking this question to are usually not medical doctors who are qualified to even answer that question. They didn't examine the other drivers and take x-rays or MRIs or any other diagnostic images to determine whether or not anybody in the accident was injured. It's also a misleading question because someone who has just been in an accident probably has adrenaline released in their body and they're not going to feel any symptoms of internal injuries until much later on. If an adjuster for one of the other drivers asks you whether any of the other drivers were injured and you're not sure, then just say, I don't know, or I can only speak for myself. You'll have to ask them. If it's clear that one of the other drivers was in fact injured, like they're unconscious or bleeding or in some other way, obviously injured, then certainly describe what you saw to the adjuster. And then moving on to question number five, did anyone call an ambulance? If you file a personal injury claim, but you did not leave the scene of the wreck in an ambulance, the insurance adjuster for the at-fault driver will likely know that you didn't leave in an ambulance from the scene, either based on the police report, which contains that information, or by talking to their own insured, 
which they probably have done before they call you. Even though the adjuster for the at-fault driver knows that you didn't leave the scene in an ambulance, they may still ask you this question to use it later to imply that you weren't really that hurt, otherwise you would have called an ambulance and taken an ambulance from the scene of the accident. Here's a recorded statement where the insurance adjuster is trying to suggest that no one was seriously injured because no one called an ambulance, but watch how it backfires when this driver who was in fact injured in the wreck explains why she didn't call an ambulance. Question, okay, okay, and um, any injuries to report or EMS called to the scene for you or for any of the other drivers? Answer, no. Um, I probably should have, but with the adrenaline and all that stuff, I thought I was fine. I thought it was just my knee that was hit, hit really bad, like my knee hurt and my chest hurt, but I figured it was just superficial. But later that evening, I started getting a really bad headache. My neck was hurting. First, my knee was still hurting, but you know, there's a huge lump on it um, from hitting the dashboard. Um, so my husband went ahead and I almost felt a little confused. Um, kind of, I'm in a dream state. I still feel that way. Um, it's got a little bit better, but my husband thought it was best to go to the ER. We went up to the emergency room, probably about 7, 7.30, and sat up there for three and a half hours before I was just like, I want to go home. I want to go to sleep. So if the adjuster asked you this question on the phone, answer truthfully that you did not leave the scene in an ambulance, but don't hesitate to point out that your adrenaline was flowing through your body at the time shortly after the accident and you didn't have a life-threatening injury that required an ambulance if that was in fact the case. And then finally, question number six, do you have a lawyer? If the answer to this question is yes, then share your lawyer's contact information with the adjuster and tell the adjuster to direct all questions to your lawyer. Once the adjuster knows that you're represented by an attorney, they should not be speaking to you about the facts of the wreck or your medical treatment or the injuries that you sustained in the accident. If you don't have a lawyer, then I strongly, strongly recommend hiring a personal injury lawyer to represent you in your claim if you're bringing a personal injury claim. A personal injury lawyer in your state will have experience dealing with adjusters and can help you obtain the best possible outcome in your situation. Now, some adjusters may avoid asking this question until the very end of your call and try to get as much information out of you before having to deal with your attorney. If you've hired an attorney, then at the very beginning of your call, before you answer any questions, you should volunteer this information. You should tell the adjuster, even if they do not ask you about it, you should tell them, I've got an attorney, please direct all of your questions to my attorney. That way, your attorney can deal directly with the insurance adjuster and you won't say anything that may inadvertently harm your claim. And you're quite frankly, you don't have to deal with the adjuster anymore. If you filed an insurance claim after a car accident and you want to know how to get your car paid for and back on the road as quickly as possible, make sure to watch this video in the top left of the screen right now. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and turn the bell notification icon on if you don't want to miss any of my other videos about this topic. And of course, as always, thank you for watching.